All right, what's up, my mathletes? This is Mr. Muscarella coming at you, and here's our third and final example of sketching polynomials if we know the roots, or the x-intercept zeros, or solutions, if we know those, and we know the y-intercept. So more sketchy time. So be sure you have Desmos open in a tab because we're gonna use that to check ourselves before we wreck ourselves. And also uh, be sure you have your notes out from before. All right, so here we go. We've got, we've already done these first two examples, example one, example two. So we did that in previous two videos. So be sure you check those out and everything. And now we're gonna take a look at our third and final example. So here we are, we've got these zeros, x equals zero, x equals one, and x equals two. So I've got these three zeros, which is really cool. And then I gotta figure out what the y-intercept is and do a little sketchy of the graph. So again, when we go to find the y-intercept, when you go to find the y-intercept, you're gonna plug in what number again? Zero. You're gonna plug in zero anywhere that there is an x. And again, some people might be able to kind of skip this step right here, depending on your level of algebraic maturity. And so you might be able to just go right to here and go to that step. So that's the minimum of what I want to see in your work. And of course, when you take the product of zero times whatever, uh, for the most part, there's one exception to that, but zero times anything will be zero. So we get a y-intercept of zero, zero, coolio. And again, standard form, super easy to find the y-intercept in that because all you're looking for is a constant. And a constant, remember, is going to be a term without uh, the variable x. So let's see, the first term, that's x cubed. We've got x squared. We've got 2x. Well, we don't have a constant in this one. So like, what's up with that? Well, there is no constant. And so the constant is just zero. And because, again, with math people, we're a little bit lazy. We don't like to write at the end like plus zero. Like, who does that? Stop. So if you're doing that, don't do that. Stop it. All right, so we're not going to write plus zero at the end. But our standard form version gives us the same y-intercept. So we get zero, zero for our y-intercept. So now it's time to plot the dots. And the three dots we're gonna plot first are gonna be our x-intercepts. So we have an x-intercept at zero, so that's right at the origin. And then we have an x-intercept at one. So again, label your, um, your x-axis, and we have another x-intercept at negative two. So at negative two, zero, and one, we have our three x-intercepts. Cool. Then we get a y-intercept, that's at zero, zero. Hey, that point is already plotted on there, awesome. So that's cool, didn't have to do, do much there. Then let's go ahead and finish off our sketch. So again, first thing we're gonna do is look at the end behavior. And when I look at my leading coefficient, my leading coefficient of x cubed, I'm gonna look at the leading coefficient and the degree of x cubed. So the leading coefficient is positive and the degree is an odd degree function. So that means it's going to be, the ends are going to be similar to what a line would look like. So I'm gonna go, and if I look at my factors, so again, I'm gonna go over to factored form just to double check, none of my factors have a multiplicity that's even. And by that, I mean, you'd have like a squared right there. So if you had a squared or maybe something to the fourth power, then that would change the way we look at it. But more on that in a second. So. I'm going to start here at negative two, and that's going to go down. So at x equals negative two, I'm going to have that going down. And then at x equals one, I'm going to have the end behavior going up. So first thing, sketchy end behavior. Boom, we're done. Now, when I look at the factored form again, the multiplicity of none of those factors is even, which tells me that each one of my x-intercepts, the curve, the function, the polynomial, is going to pass through those values. So that means I'm going to start over here at x equals negative two and I'm going to keep going up, 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 up. And then at some point, some point I'm going to have to curve back around to come down and go through that y-intercept. As I pass through that y-intercept, I'll go, go, go. And then at some point, which I don't really care about right now, I'm going to curve around and then come back up and go through my other x-intercept of x equals one. So that's it. That's my general sketch. And of course, we want to check in Desmos to make sure our stuff is legit and it matches and everything. So to the Desmos we go. So what I want you to put in Desmos, so you can pause the video if you want, put your factored form in one spot. And then what I want you to do in the other spot is put in the standard form. Because you always want to make sure that you did your distributing correctly to go from factored form to standard form if you're not given both forms already. So pause video input that into Desmos, and then let's make sure we agree. All right, so here we are. 
So you should have those same values, right? Our pictures should look like this. We've got both curves turned on and I can see that over here because I have both the purple and the black selected in my function. So I've got my one function there, which is the purple one. If I go down here and notice the color change too. So when I highlighted, when I was in that row of the purple function or the black uh, colored function, that was black. And then when I moved up to purple, it changed to purple. But notice they go through the same spot. So negative two, zero, uh, zero, zero, and one, zero. Those are my X intercepts and then my Y intercept of zero, zero. Coolio. Now I'm going to throw in one other little spot at you because this is going to come up later. Uh, so we're going to talk about this. If I go to this very top spot, so Desmos will also be really nice and give you these two values right here. So this top spot right here, and I call it a hill, uh, this top spot right here at the top of a hill. So if you look to the left side of it all the way up until we get to the top of that hill, the slant of our line is a positive slope. Our slant of our curve is a positive slope. So we've got a positive slope up until that spot. And then we level out up there at the top and that top is called the relative maximum. And then we're gonna curve back down again and we're gonna keep coming down, 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 down until we hit our bottom spot. And the bottom of the hill is, you know, I'm gonna call that a valley. And so at the bottom of the valley, that's called a relative minimum. And the word relative uh, implies that there's stuff higher or lower than those actual Y values. But then I curve back around and come back up. So just kind of setting the table for later, but these values right here, so I want you to add this to it because it's gonna be something that comes up later. That's gonna be called a relative uh, min at that spot. And then up here, wherever our high point is, wherever that spot is, we're gonna have a relative max. All right, so make sure you add that to your notes because we'll be coming up with those later on in the course. We'll be looking at curve sketching that involves those as well. So cool, that's it. Desmos matches my factored in standard form. My zeros are all matchy matchy with my pictures and everything. So cool, we're good, man, we're out. Peace, and I'll catch you guys later. Make it a great day. I love you guys.